So we're going to begin Simen Kuf Hei. This is a long Simen, an interesting Simen, somewhat different than what we've been used to till now. Din Heter. Even though that's the name, the title of the Simen, we're going to see that this is not your typical Nofal Letoch Heter. We spoke about Bitul, we spoke about Tam, we spoke about certain things that pretty much don't have any Bitul. In this simon, we're going to see various other methods of a heter becoming usher. The typical that we're used to is a sort, a, a sort of mixture. That's what Tarubus is all about, a mixture where something can become usher, either because it's Be'in or because there's Tam, there's Basr Be'cholov that you've covered, which in itself is a unique Isser, or the mixture of two things that are Mutra on their own, but together they're usher. And what has been learned so far is whether it's Lach B'Yavish, or Yavish B'Yavish, even though the Lalochas of Yavish B'Yavish we'll see later, they become Aser unless there is the required amount to be, make it bottle. That's a simple way of looking at it. Whether it's Tam or Be'in, as long as you don't recognize the Be'in, it will become Aser if you don't have enough of an amount to be mevatel, the Tam or the Isser itself. However, that can happen whether there is heat involved, Bishul, or it can happen even if there's no heat involved, as long as the things are mixed. However, if things are touching each other, there shouldn't be any problem. Unless they're touching each other. Yeah, well, we'll see. There really shouldn't be a problem. You just separate them. Just because two things touch each other, we don't know that there should be a problem. When, we, when everything is mixed up that we cannot see, where things are cooked together so there's an issue of time, that we already understand by now. But when things are sitting at top of each other, next to each other, that shouldn't be a problem, or should it? There are various ways that things can come into contact. Even in heat, there is the heat of bishul, and there is a, there is the heat of tzli, roasting, where there was no liquid, right, involved. That's what roasting is, right? No liquid baked, right? There could be something called melicha, which is more discussed in depth in Hilchas melicha. The, 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 there's a tremendous power in the salt. It not only draws out the blood from the piece of meat, it also has a certain heat to it. So if, if it comes in contact with something else, it could be a problem. It could pose a problem because of the heat that it has. So it's not necessarily a bishul. We will, we will see in Simon Kuf Hei several other methods of contact that pose problems. One of them will involve heat. But it will not be the heat of Bishul, it will be Yatso Ledes. In other words, it's hot enough, but it's not cooking. We will see Meliach Keroteach, which is a concept involving salt. And we will see at length the whole sugya of Kovush, which is what we'll cover today, pretty much. Kovush is a very unique situation where two things are together, and they are together for a number of hours, number of minutes, number of days, regardless. And why are they together? It could be because we're pickling stuff. And that's what pickling is all about. Kovush, if we can translate it as pickling, it would be appropriate, even though sometimes there could be a kovush which is not pickling, right? If it's involved, it just happens to be in liquid. We water. water. We spoke about an achbar being found in shuman. Remember that? A mouse being found in fat. And there was a question of Kovush there too. This, it solidified. So of course it added a little bit to the, to the fakus that we have, whether it was Kovush or not. But it, regardless, you know, there can be a problem of time being absorbed as a result of something called Kovush. So that is some of the halachas that we'll be discussing in Simen Kuf Hei. Other forms of, or other methods, I should say, of how a heter can become usher other than Bishul, and other than just plain mixtures. Well, it's at least in terms of meaning, a good thing yeah. translating from the meaning. Soaking so and soaking. immersion. Yes, you're right. Yeah, something being soaked, something because that's what the word means. Like that. That's the translation of the word. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's correct. There's an always been pickling and soaking. Yeah, of course, and that's what I'm going to, I'm going to explain that. So I gave one example, oh. but, but Ilan is right, that the real translation of the word kavosh is not pickling, it's more soaking or immersing something in liquid. 
So in Simon Kuf Hey, we are going to see that there are certain things that can pose a problem as a result of some sort of contact that is atypical of what we're used to. We're used to Bishul, we're used to maybe it's because you saw that in Basel Bechalov too. Maybe you're used to Melicha, things like that. But Kovosh is something brand new, even though we did discuss briefly Kovosh and Simon Kuf Dalet. Now we're getting into it a lot more. So I'll read the Mechaber. And then I'll tell you what he says in the Bish Yosef, and then we'll continue from there. Mechaber's first halacha is that Isra Shenishra and Heter, an Isra that was soaked together with a Heter. Me'es le'es, 24 hours or more, but Tzoyinin, it's cold, but it was Nishra. It's cold, there's no heat, but it was Nishra, and it was 24 hours. Mikri Kovush, that's called Kovush. And so what if it's Kovush? Well, I have some news to tell you. There's a halacha that says, Kovush, Arehu Kemevushal. It is as though it would have been cooked. In cooking in an Isir you run into a problem. So do you run into a similar problem if you have Kovush. It's cold, but it's Meis Leis. Venes are Kuloi, and the whole thing becomes also just like in Bishal. Aval Pachos Mikan, if it did not soak together with the Isir for 24 hours, it was less. It's enough with just a docha, just rinse it out. Let's say you have a piece of meat that fell into cheesecake. Okay? Now we're going back to Basu Bechol a little bit. When you're dealing with two that are cold, we all agree, right? There's no sophic in that, that it's less of a problem. When you have a piece of meat falling, uh, that's cold, falling into something that's cold, neither of them are hot, both of them are cold, usually it should be, you know what, just wash off the meat of the cheese that's on it. What about the cheese itself? Same thing. You don't see any meat, it should be okay. It touched, so what? They're both cold. No time has been transferred just by simple contact. Right? If one of them is hot, it could be it can be a problem. Or if the meat, especially if the meat has stokim, remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. It has ridges or splits or grooves, or it may absorb, even though it is We're the one that's trapped. Right. Even though it is the one that's falling in. Nothing is falling on top of it. Still. Maybe it will absorb you. Right? Chicken. And there are sixty doesn't it? Right. Chicken in the refrigerator. The milk fell into it. You know, your wife took the tray of chicken left over from Shabbos, put it in the fridge. She doesn't, you know, to cool, you know, to keep it for the next, for Sunday, Monday, whatever. And milk fell into it. The chicken is now cold. Chicken is not a, is not a big problem. It has skin. It's not like meat. It has grooves. It could be a difference. It could be. There can, there can be a difference. They're going to say, oh, no, what are we going to do now? Well, they're both cold. Just rinse it and eat it. If you can rinse it all off, and you should be able to, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, when you rinse it, is it preferable with cold water? So yes, the yeah, sure, water sure, sure, definitely, yeah, you use cold water. So whenever things are cold, it's really not a problem. So the Mechaber tells us we're talking about sun in here. But you know what? It's Kobush, and it's Meis Leis, we got a problem. But Pochus Mikan, he says, Badocho Sagi, just like we've learned before when we have Tzoyinen. Less than 24 hours, you can ignore the fact that it was soaking. Now, we're here, the first example is Isra Shan Ishraim Heter, right? Well, you know, it was his example is that you could have two items of foods soaking together in, wa in, in water. Because that's all he said. It's Kovosh. He didn't tell us what liquid, so let's assume water. A piece of meat that's Usr, a piece of meat that's Heter, they're both the same. We know which one is the Isr. I'm going to take it out. It's too late. If it was there for 24 hours, of course, you're not going to eat the isur, but the heter has been, it had bad company mm -hmm. for 24 hours, 24 hours. Or, or more, over 24 hours, yeah. So, it absorbed. So, before we go on, this is the first seif. Let's have some background. Bish Yosef on this seif, Bish Yosef on the tour, does a good job. He always does a good job. I'm saying, it's not too long. He gets to the point right away, tells us the makor, what the issues are. So if you ever have a chance to read the Bish Yosef on this particular halacha, it's very, very nice, very easy to follow and understand. So Bish Yosef basically tells us like this. Kovush ke this concept of Kovush is like is a din Torah. 
It's not something that the Rabbanon made up. It's not That's a zero. Kavush Kemevushal, this Koach of Kavush Kemevushal, is a Din Torah. And where do we know this? So he points out, like all the Poiskim who talk about this issue, point out to the Makor. You see various Gemoras, there's various, there are various examples of things that are being soaked together that pose a problem. So from the various examples in the Gemara, in the Mishnayas, we see that Kavush is Kemevushu, except for Basa Vecholov. In Basa Vecholov, there's definitely a dogish, an emphasis that you need Bishul. It has to be real Bishul. So it will be also to eat with the Rabbanon, but Basa Vecholov that are Kavush together will not be Bishul. You're not transgressing Bishul. Is that what, so that's with respect to, you're not allowed to cook milk meat together. Exactly. But with respect to eat, we still the or rice with or the, with the rabbanon. Are they eating also the rabbanon? Yeah, because they're not because really... they have to be cooked together right, to be, to be a, Right, exactly. So you can't eat them with the rabbanon. To do it, it's the rabbanon. So that's the only exception of a real kavush, whose din is a doraisa, the method of absorption is that it renders the, the heter and iser, is only applicable in Shari Sun, but not in Basa Bechalov. That's because, very interesting. Yeah. So the Basa Bechalov, even though Kabush is, can, it's been a Torah. is the Orisa, right. nevertheless, with respect to Basa Bechalov, something that was Kabush, meat that was Kabush and milk, that's correct. is an Isidur Rabbanon to eat. Yeah, because that's wow. not what the Torah had in mind as far as Bishul Basa Bechalov. Right, and the Bishul is the condition that it should be a the Orisa Exactly, to that's eat. the condition. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, because on the one hand you're saying Kabush is Kemevushal. I have to review ah. it. But not for Basar Becholov. Is that why he says it's... Yeah, because as far as it's making Kavush. something Usr, the Kavush produces the same kind of Isser in the Heter as though it would have been cooked together on heat, on, over the fire. But not for Basar Becholov. But not for Basar Becholov. Yes. And everybody agrees with this. Yeah, everybody agrees with this. But Basar Becholov is not rendered a Basar Becholov Midaraisa by Kavush. However, the Bishesev goes on to explain, even though I just told you that this is a Din Doraisa, what is unclear from all the Makoras is how much time do you need for Kovush? Mm. It doesn't say that in the Gemara. So the Shir's man again is a What? Shir's man then again with the Rabban. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Well, at least it will contribute to a suffix in a sense. Mm. We don't know. There are Raya's, and this Raya, which is interesting, is also from Basar Bechalov, because the Gemara says, even if you're toro, toro le basar becholov a whole day, 20, I mean, ace le ace, it would still not be bishul basar becholov. So the Gemara uses the example of basar becholov that if you were to do it together in kavush for me ace le ace, it still wouldn't be bishul. So, so it from, has to be from, more from, than so, ace. No, no, still. You know, it was, even if you did it at me ace le ace, they were together, it still wouldn't be bishul. Mm. So the Mechab Mesirsa said, you see, the other Rishonim I think say the same thing, you see. The Gemara itself is using this, this potential of 24 hours as a time frame. So we infer from that, infer that Kovush is Me'es So that's the basis of Se'es. Yeah, but that would be a Kovush with a Raisa. Even though the Shear is not written anywhere, it's a Raisa, but that's, it's inferred that that would render it Kovush with a Raisa. So Me'es says, so again, the time of Kovush is not written anywhere, but we understand it to be the Mordechai has other rayas, he's a Rishon too, and he says three me'i Three times Three times, three days, three days. Yeah, he brings a raya there from, from wine, barrels of goyim. There's a raya from there, yeah. Most poiskim, Shoyim Machan, of course, don't go with that. We go with what the Mechaber says, we go with what the Rosh, I believe, says. Oh, how is it understood in the Rosh that he holds that? The tour says, basically, this is what we follow, that Kovush usually, and I'm going to say usually for a reason, is Me'isle, sometimes it's less. But we're not going to be lenient to say it's more. If anything, we're going to say it sometimes may be less. So again, Kovush Minatora, how much time, I don't know. We infer that it's Me'isle. Another thing that Vesir Yosef says, and the, the, the Poiskim, of course, discuss, is that don't think that Kovush is only in tzir and choymetz, in brine or in vinegar, like we were saying pickling, that's kavush, why would you have something in kavush? So don't think kavush, even though ex you may have seen such examples of kavush, 
And the typical example, as Rashi even himself points, Kovosh, oh, that's what is soaked in tear. And Rashi seems to be saying, unless he's not saying it dafka, mm. that maybe that's all it is, is Kovosh is even tear or Choymetz. I forget which one he uses as an example. You want another example of Kovosh? That which is soaked in, in brine. So Rashi says that, and everybody, of course, is wondering, does Rashi really hold that Kovosh is only in that? Or does he give really only an example of Kovosh? Because Lemaise, Lemaise, just about everybody holds Kovosh is not only in Sir and Choymetz, it's also in Maim and in Coca-Cola. By the way, try to put a piece of meat in Coca-Cola, there will be nothing left over after a while. <laughs> really? The, that's why they use it for toilets, you know, if it's clogged. There's some time. Oh, yeah? Oh, sure. I didn't know you no? How yeah. about the don't, you have a, don't you have a bottle of Coke next to your toilet? Mm, Just in case. Because we're only with Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola as well. That I don't know. Well. That I know. What? You use a paint remover. As, a, as what? A paint remover. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, part, there are other liquids that will pose the same question, whether this was Kavish or not. And it seems to be that they, they all will qualify for some sort of Kavish. Yeah. So it's not just in Choyim and Sincere. Do all the other liquids sold or, or Okay, sold we're going we're to get to that. That's a good question. We're going to get to that. As to, are, is there any difference whatsoever? And there is. Of course there is. One is hot. One is sharp. Kharifus. One is salty. And one is not. Plain water. But the base Yosef, in continuing from the base Yosef, he says, by the way, it does not only apply to Tzir Chavis, which you may have thought, it also can apply to mine. And, the, and Beisosu goes on to bring his proof that it's a me'es le'es, even though, as we said, there's other shittas that hold that it's more. That's the Beisosu. Now that we know how Kovash works, the next thing we need to know is that it's not just a piece of Iser that was in a mashke of Heter. It could be a piece of Heter that was in a mashke, a liquid of Iser. Right? Why? Because when we say Kovosh is a mevushal, we mean both ways. In the same way that Bishul accomplishes Belia and Plita, it can absorb and it can emit a flavor, Kovosh can do those things too. We're saying Kovosh is mevushal. So therefore, it makes no difference whether Isser, a piece of Isser, is in Heter, in a liquid Heter, a soup. It was Kovosh, cold, 24 hours. It absorbed from the Isser. I don't care that the Isser absorbed from the Heter. So what? I can't eat the Isser anyway. But the Heter absorbed from the Isser. Or if it's a piece of Heter that fell into a liquid that is trafe. And it sat there for 24 hours. Right? It will absorb from the liquid. Right? So Kovash will be, whether it's Blia or whether it's Plita, or whether it's Isser in Heter or Heter in Isser, it makes no difference. It's the same idea. Now, since, of course, Kovosh is Kemevushol, we obviously understand that if there's ever a suffix about this Kovosh, it's a suffix de Raisa, right? Once you say something is Medin Torah, then any fake is usually here would be a suffix Lechovra. However, even though so far so good, there's an interesting Pisgah Tshuva here on this uh, sea, on this simon, that brings down the Noida Yehuda. And I really like this Noida Yehuda. Why do I like the Noida Yehuda? Because the Orach HaShulchan says what the Noida Yehuda says. <laughs> and, and I like what the Orach HaShulchan says. So, anyway, it turns out that if you learn through the various sugyas in Chulin, Psachim, and the various Mishnahis in Shisim Truma, that deal with examples of Kovush, what you find is that they don't, they're not all created equal. What does that mean? That Kovush is not always the same. It does not always have the same effect. It really all depends on the ingredients. As the Orach HaShulchan says, and as the Noida Behuda points out, that depending on what the foods and liquids are, the timing is different for Kovush, and some may not readily absorb as well as the others. It depends what you're dealing with. So even though we are saying Kovush Kemavusho, it doesn't work exactly the same way with every sort of combination. Sometimes it takes more time, sometimes it takes less time, and you're going to be in for a surprise. Sometimes Kovosh cannot happen. And I'll explain that a little bit later. It just doesn't happen. Okay? So 
The Rebbe of Yehuda, and again, Noruch Hashulchan goes through the he he goes through the motion here because he's wondering why the Rambam doesn't just quote all of these halachas. Because I, and he says because of that maybe because there's so many possibilities that he didn't want to just make a distinction. You know, here it's different, here it's more, here it's less. So it's just using I think one example, the Rambam of Kovush. But there are quite a few, quite a few situations where we would have a problem of Kovush. But as the Noida Bible points out, you know, they're all very, very different. And since they are different, perhaps, perhaps they, this would really help us if there was ever a suffix. Because then you can combine it with another suffix and make a spec sveka out of it. The suffix does become kavush or not, or maybe it takes, it takes more time. But every, the poison, the Choronim seem to be saying that even though the Noida Bihuda says that, maybe possibly another suffix, we just go with the Machab and the Ramah. But it's a suffix the rice of the and we don't make additional sveikas just because things are different. We don't differentiate between ingredients for the most part, even though they do, they do somehow react differently when they are together. So the halacha ignores the difference between different uh, uh, right substances. exactly as Dorcha Shulchan points out that we don't distinguish as far as the amount of time between min and min, even though there is such a thing. That some things may take longer to become kavush, and some things that we don't distinguish between them. The poiskim said kavush mevushal stam even maim, and that's it. Once you say even a maim, it makes it. In other words, it, it basically leaves out anything, a, anything, anything else. Yeah. Then include it. Right. However, we do have to we do have to uh, stress that tzir and choymets do stand out. The chavur is going to talk about it. Later on, at the end of the of this, that sir and choymets are more powerful than water. And since sir, which is brine, and choymets, vinegar, is more, especially brine, salty than regular water, the harifas of the salt, or the strength of this, uh, of this liquid, <coughs> causes the brine to be a, what's called a, a form of melicha. In meliach keroteach, there's a concept in Hilchas melicha, and I think you saw it in Bosa Bechol of two, that meliach keroteach. What kind of roteach? The roteach of tzli. And tzli is a machloikus. Right, it's, you know, a tzli, we will see, can make a difference if something is fatty or not. You have two things that are touching each other, but there is heat of tzli. They're not cooked together with liquid. But they're touching. But they're touching each other. And that heat is enough to at least absorb, or at least cause an issue to be absorbed today. Klipa. Unless it's very fatty, which we'll talk about. So if you have tzir and choymets, that could be a problem. In other words, if, it, if it's meliach, it's keroteach, right, like, like sli, then we have to determine... And now we almost have a liquid. What, what we have to determine, right, and it's a liquid too here, right? What, and therefore it's a kovosh form of, of meliach keroteach. It's not a keroteach mamish, it's not a roasted, right? What do we have to determine? We have to determine, since this is stronger than water, the amount of time that is required, right? Plus, what happens if it was less than that amount of time? Will anything happen to it nevertheless? Because we said by water, if it's less than the ace, the ace, it's behadocha. Would that also apply to tzir? This is what we have to determine. Now, what's the shear of, uh, what's the shear, the amount of time on tzir, at least tzir? I say tzir because not everybody says tzir and coinlets are the same. But everybody agrees, or for the most, almost everybody, that tzir is more powerful than water. So I'm skipping the Roma for a moment, and I'm going to straight to the end of the Mechaber and Sivalev. The im hu kovush betoich tzir, not water, but Mechaber says, o betoich choymetz, not everybody says choymetz, vinegar. So im shoh kedeshi tenenu al haor, v'yartiach v'yaschi lizbash l'areu kemevusho. If you left it enough time in the tzir, enough time that when you would place it on the fire, it would begin to cook, that could be six minutes. Okay. And listen to this, it will be usher, not hadacha, but only kedei klipa. 
So the Mechaber said two things here. Tzir is more powerful than water. Tzir is the same as Choymetz. And the shear that the Rosh brings, and he's quoting from the Rosh, I think, with the Rashbo, Rosh, I think, that if, if it was, if it was Keshir, that it's a Neno ala or, not Me'es Le'es. Enough just that it would cook. On the fire. On the fire. You put a pot of water on the fire, it will cook, start cooking, bubbles. That's the shear of Tzir. To answer the whole thing. Kerotea. Kerotea, yeah. Exactly. So really, same thing. Not Kedei Klippa. Okay, let's, let's been the whole thing together. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole thing together because it's sitting in liquid. Less than that, it would be Kedei Klippa. So really, it, it has a pretty thing didn't like cook thought. Yes, because it's called uh -huh. But it's called Meliach Keroiseach means that the Meliach has the ability so combat, yeah. to act as a Roiseach. Just that in Kavush, it's fully absorbed because of the nature of how it is immersed into the liquid. By contact of tzli, it's just contact, heat. Here it's actually soaked in the tzir. In the tzir, within a few minutes, it's going to absorb the entire tzir. And if you don't, if you've never seen it, try pickling. And what you will find is that the water will absorb the taste from the pickles. The pickles will absorb the taste of whatever is sitting in the liquid, garlic and pepper and all these things, within a short time. But what did we just said from the from the Bnei Dabiu in the Shulchan, that depending what you're pickling, it could take longer or less. Maybe cabbage takes longer. Maybe it's not as porous. I don't know. You won't feel it as much unless it stayed there for 12 hours, not 10, 12 minutes. Depends what it is. So that's a, that's a very important point. But we don't really relate to that here anyway, because we're following the plain halacha, not making any distinguishes. Distinctions, kavush to mevushal, usually meis leis, unless you have tzir or choymets, according to mechaber. Then you have a problem. Then the shear is different. The shear is to put it on the fire. It will take a few minutes, and it will be as though it was cooked, and the whole thing becomes aser. Whether it's the the liquid becoming aser, because that's the heter, or whether it's the piece that fell into iser tzir. We're talking about yeah. cooking on the fire. Yeah. We're talking. Not this, but the liquid till it... Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, the, till the whole thing, whatever no, it no, is... No, 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 because it will take much longer, obviously, with the salad that's in there to cook, to cook, to, 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 or whatever. Whatever it is that we're dealing with, that, whatever it will, as long as it will take for that to heat up. Exactly. But if you have a salad in a... Right. right? Yeah, yeah, but it's whichever less. the hetter is. The hetter is the liquid. Whichever the hetter is. Okay. Whichever is the hetter is, as long as it will take to cook. Right. Put it in the fire to cook. And that varies a little bit. Now, according to the Rosh, if it was less than the shear, it would become usher almost immediately, so even time. within a minute. So, uh, it fell in, oh, oh, you took it out, it's already usher. Kedei klipa. By shear, it will be right, almost right away. Yeah. So yeah. by cooking, yeah. uh, uh, on, the, on the fire, yeah. I have, let's say, uh, some kind of soup and a piece of meat. Right. And it happens to be from a trade. Then the meat become. And it was kavush? At, no, it's on the fire actually. Oh, on the fire. right. So the meat would become usser after the amount of time it takes for the chicken to start to boil? Yeah. Or it would become usser after the time to start to be hot? Well, remember, the, the, the easter in this case is the liquid. It's the chicken soup. Right. This chicken soup, by becoming boiling hot, will yeah. penetrate. The meat. Ah, so it's like a tatagavar? Yeah, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Not because of tatagavar, but simply because bubbling hot liquid so has the strength to yeah. penetrate. So whatever is to the liquid, to the liquid, it doesn't matter whether it's head or liquid. Right, it's the exactly. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter that much because in the end, if we're dealing with liquid, it's going to be the liquid, yeah. So, so let me ask you Because that, that liquid, if the, if the liquid is the usser, it will enter the meat. So let me ask the reverse right. question. Now, a piece of pork fell into a kosher chicken. Right. Then, for the kosher chicken to become usser, it would depend on how long it takes for soup to start boiling, or how long it for the pork to become uh, start cooking. That's, what, that's pretty much what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, so exactly. It, it, what, what happens is, if one of them becomes hot enough, where it can absorb or give off either of the two either of the two it already is a problem and that is why when your piece of pork fell into a chicken a kosher chicken soup and you were able to take it out just in time before it got it was they actually put it on the, on the fire 
Oh no, but you took it out right away. Okay. So that's before it heat up anything. But what if the chicken It would be mutter. There's no time. But if the chicken soup started boiling already, it's also be mutter? It's also. That's also. already also. It's also. So, yeah. so, so it depends because whichever of the two starts boiling first, whether the isser or the heter. Right. If they boiling. are together, it really doesn't matter that much. That's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what I was talking more is, you know, I just wanted to putting, wh what am I putting on the fire? Well, whatever you're putting on the fire. Does, mm -hmm. But if the two are together, it really makes no difference because once one of them is hot enough, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a problem. If that's what Bishul is. Bishul is, it's Bishul, right? It's hot. But the, <laughs> imagine you have, a, imagine the soup is boiling hot. Mm -hmm. It's already boiling for the last 10 hours. And then a piece of meat fell in. It was just there two seconds. So what? Right. That's, there's enough heat there that even two seconds, zoop, it took time out. So that would be, that would be, that would, in, in now I would agree with that you. That would really be a, a, a case of Tatakaba. Yeah, a kind of Tatakaba. I would agree with you that something that was there for two seconds versus something that was there for ten minutes, there's probably more time, but we don't have that chiluk in Hilchus We don't know how much Because time. we don't know. Yeah. And we're just, that's a humra. We're right. just machmer all the way, and we need to connect the whole thing. That's all. But realistically, probably there's less time. Yeah, sure. But it's so hot that it's enough to draw out some time, otherwise they wouldn't make it out. Sir. That's the whole reason why if a piece of meat fell into one pot and subsequently the meat fell into another pot, we right. don't think part of the taste to remain in the first pot, so the second pot only needs six half the meat. Right, right, the same the reason. Pot needs six exactly. Because we didn't know which you know, time the meat releases its taste. In Hilfus Brochus, if you make a mistake, but you caught yourself right away, it's okay. Where are you? Right? There is such a concept in Allah. But oh, yeah, that's fine. That doesn't work with you, Surya. <laughs> you can't take it that just that quickly. It's already hot. Okay. So as far as as far as Choymetz, the Shach seems to be saying like like the Mechavah. The Shach says Choymetz is not a problem. Choymetz is just like any other liquid. Remember, we talked about the what appears to be a steer between Mechavah here and in Kof Dalit. It's not a real steer. There's various ways to explain the Mechavah. The Mechaber, of course, is machmir more on choymets than he is on regular liquids, but it seems to be that he's machmir, either according to the Mogin of Rome, because we're talking about the stronger kind of choymets, that's one way of looking at it, or because he's machmir that if he was there for a few minutes, you need at least a kadei chlipa. But he doesn't seem to be for sure saying that choymets is on par with tzir, that it's gonna, the whole thing is going to be also within a few minutes, just like tzir is, not necessarily. So, but anyway, the Shach says Choymetz is like Sharm Mashkim. And I think the Prichodosh says the same thing in the Gro, the Mishnah Brewer brings it down in the that we treat Choymetz like Sharm Mashkim. And that's important to know. What about if it fell into whiskey? Uh, I saw Prima Godim on this. The Prima Godim says that with whiskey, it's just like Sierra. Whiskey is Chorif, it's sharp. It would be just like uh, the Halachas of Tzir. There's an interesting, however, uh, diyun, a discussion amongst several Akronim about ice. Can there be kovash in ice? <laughs> and the, from the Orcha Shulchan, I think, I think even from the Prima uh, Godin, maybe I forget, it's much more that that's not kovash. Why isn't that kovash? Because for kovash to really be chemically kovash, you have to have the liquid moving, circulating. Has to be a liquid? Ice. Exactly. And ice is not a liquid, it's not circulating. They use the, they use the term yeah, circulating, yeah, yeah. moving around. Yeah. And that's not. Even though there was one Achim that says, I think that you, it is, but we don't pass it like that. At least not Behefsa Meruba, you can for sure rely that that's not Kovosh. But you yeah. don't know how long the object is in the water before this. Right, that was the question we had with, with Schumann. Yeah, that's a, that's a separate suffix. Yeah. Right. Ah, so maybe it fell in after it was already on. If you, if you no, know it was that, already you ice. Just it off. What is that? No, 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 no. It, it had to have fallen before it was ice. So it the problem is, the question is, how long was it? Why, why one, it one, of the sphakas, one of the sphakas by ice is, how long was it? Now I see it's ice. We may talk about it on Thursday or another time. There's a whole, the whole discussion here about Chazaka. Mm -hmm. Chazaka is a very interesting discussion about, I see something now. Do I assume that this is the way it was before? Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you learn about carbon-14 dating, which is an interesting science, they make various assumptions. Sure. And one of them is that things have been the same mm. all along in the atmosphere, and they're not the same if you hold that there was a big marble. <laughs> they're not the same if you hold there was a big bang? Oh, okay. 
things right. at some point were different. Sold it, there wasn't yeah, it back. yeah. She things were different. No, but the, the, the difference with the marble is that the, the, whatever you, whatever proof you do have evidence is also contaminated as a result of the Same marble. thing with Big Bang, it also contaminates. So. It doesn't yeah. contaminate. Yeah. So anyway, I, I have a whole lecture just on carbon-14 dating. It should contaminate for that. Yeah. <laughs> even, 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 what? Even with the big volcano, it should contaminate. There's no bitter. <laughs> so, Not even with, the civilians. With yeah. something the size of Mount St. Helens, or right. even a big volcano, which is whatever you've got. Sure, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, but it is, what's interesting about carbon-14 dating is that it's one of the most, if not the most, reliable method of dating from, from Beratius, from at least after the Mabel. They come very close within a couple years. Mm -hmm. And that can be tested, because we know things from the time of Cleopatra. We know how long ago she lived, and we find things that belong to her, around her. So you can test this method. The problem is that if you go beyond the Mabel, or before the Mabel, we know from the Torah that the atmosphere was different. Mm -hmm. And that is why you find all kinds of animals here in Los Angeles, which used to be a subtropical climate here, which is what the, before the marble it was. You didn't have a north and south pole. You didn't have the extremes. And, and Hashem did not make pieces of continents here. It was all one land mass. I mean, there was a lot of changes that occurred as a result of the marble and other floods. It's a, very, it's a fascinating topic. But anyway, for another time. So with Kerach, there would be various fakers, but in, being in Kerach itself is not a real Kobush. Yeah. And therefore, I think the sh Rosh is the one that says if you were to have a dense, is that how you say in English? Samich. Uh, samich, you have a very dense kind of soup, not liquidy. Is the word dense? Yeah. There would be no Kobush. There would be no Kobush. It's too dense. It doesn't move. Which is interesting, which is, which is why he says by an Akbar, the same thing by Schumann. It would have to be liquefied. If you know for sure it was never liquefied, it's not a problem. It would have to be completely liquid for it to be a real kavush. If it's not, it's not. Now, what about lach belach? What do you say about lach belach? Two liquids together. This is an interesting one. Is there kavush? Two liquids mix. So the Orach says, oh, that one is easy. Lach belach? They naturally mix. So what's the question? The problem is, <laughs> he's right. I mean, if they're mixed, they're mixed. Right. But, if you can, mixed. but if you can think of a hechetimza, of a scenario where you can remove or separate one liquid from another, remember we spoke about oil removing the fat, the smetane? Yeah. Oil, oil, oil and water, water. exactly. And that's why it's important for us to know if the din of kovosh applies to lach belach. It's not, it's not so obvious. Because if theoretically you can remove, would there still be? Will it still be us? Because it was kavush, and some say no. Some actually, some places say there's no there's no kavush by lach belach if you can remove it. By the way, the dense soup. The thick soup, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. By soup, it would be called thick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore, some say there would be no din of kavush by lach belach. There's a discussion about it. And if things are dry and they're touching each other, there's no liquid involved, then for sure there's no kavosh. Right? Kavosh does have to involve a certain amount of liquid. The question is, what if they're just a little bit wet? That not, may not be enough. So these are the kinds of, these are, these are, I don't want to spend too much time on these things, I just wanted to share with you, so you should know, these are some of the issues that are brought up when it comes to kavosh. What if they're damp, they're very wet, there's some liquid, there's not a lot of liquid. You know what, this is very interesting? Hilchus Shabbos. If you learn Tilchah Shabbos, you, you, you probably recall that, uh, that there's a big machloikas on if yesh bishlach bishu belach. Okay? So the Ramah makes a compromise. The, what are the two shitas? There's no bishul. Ain bishul, acha bishul belach. And the other side of the story says, mapitom. If it's cooled off, you can recook it. So yesh bishul, acha bishul, in lach. Comes along the Ramah. No, no, and no, no, we ain't bishul. Some say ain bishul lach bishul. Some say if you oh. can recook it. Then right. you can... Some say okay. Oh, some okay. say ain. Yeah, some yeah, say yeah. yesh. Yeah. Comes along the Ramah and says, you know what? If it did not cool off completely, yeah. mm -hmm. if it's still a little bit warm, ain bishul lach bishul. Mm -hmm. Whereas the mechaber is machmer. In that, this is one of the areas where in Chol is the Sephardim are more machmer than Ashkenazim. If it cooled off a little bit, even a little bit, yesh bishul lach bishul. Okay, fine. Okay. Now you have fish that you want to warm up. Okay? And you're going to warm it up enough, the proper way. But it has some rotor, it has some sauce. 
is that's rotev, a little, it's a yovesh, but is that a little bit of sauce, make it a lach, that's going to be bishol lach bishol. So I think, I mean, the Rav Shlomo Zaman Oerbach says that if it's just a little bit, it's not, it's not lach. But that would be an well, still, he's a poiser. I mean, he has to. He has to run. He's not telling us based on the Roma. Oh, he's not telling us. Based he's not telling us based on the Roma. No. Necessarily, uh-huh. we can apply his psak if you're a Sfardi too. Uh-huh. Because if he says that this is lach and you're going to be mocked with the lach, then you're going to be mocked with the lach. If he tells you it's not lach, then you know, then it's not a problem. Not not a quantum Sfardi, not quantum Ashkenazim. Sure. No, no, of course. I mean, that his psak is not just based on the Roma. This second, what do you do with? And Hamavad also discusses this. It's a, it's a real valid question. It says the same thing pretty much. I think they all agree. If it's a little bit, it's not going to render the whole thing lach, just because there's a little bit. Depending. So the question is, how much is there? Does anyone say other? I don't know. I didn't. I, don't, I didn't read everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is like what I know. The You didn't say any opinions. That say I didn't otherwise. see anyone. But it, it, there could be a difference in opinion as to how much you need Reutev. How much liquid is there? You know, that could make, that could make a difference. So the Hoyra, a bagel out of the freeze also has a... Oh, that's nothing. Oh, right, that's nothing. You are told, however, that if you're taking a glass from the sink that was rinsed today, yesterday, and you want to pour yourself a hot cup of tea from the percular, try to dry up that cup of uh, the glass. So there should be no spots of any liquid that is cold glass, and you're pouring hot boiling water on those few droplets mm. of water. Mm. Okay, we try our best, but you, it's not that you're going to be mavasho, who knows what. But, but, but that's for people who want to try their, their hot. Um, most people stand with their toilet. No, 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 no. You're having a second cup of tea? You have a second cup of tea? We always, you know, you put glass, you have in the sink, you have no, two double sinks, yeah. you, you rinse your cup and you just put it on the side. put it on the side. On the side, yeah, it's you always, it's wet. It okay. It's wet, sure. So it's best to dry it out because of that. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, so by lach belach, there's the various diunim. But if there's yovesh be yovesh, they're touching, it's not a problem. There's no need of cover. Now comes the, the more interesting one of all. Okay, we've spoken about various ingredients, tzir, maim, tushi urim in kavush, one is mesle ace for the most part, the other one is sear, it's less. What about the keli itself? The keli. You have brine sitting in a keli for over 24 hours. The keli become asa? Does the keli absorb or not? Does kavush affect kalim? You hear the question? You hear? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's mashma that yes. It's mashma from the poison that yes. Kavush not only affects the keli for the keli to be boilea, if you have heter sitting in a treif pot for meis lace, it's going to absorb in the same way that it absorbs from dul. This is, again, this is not so simple, and I'm going to go into this a little bit, but that is the general idea. The general idea is that kavush does apply to an extent in Kenyan too. Now, even though we just said it does, it doesn't mean that it, the same halach of tzir will apply to the pot. Oh, within six minutes, that pot will be usher. <laughs> no. Or that liquid, in other words, the tear will not affect the timing of the pots in the, way, in the same way it affects the foods. Well, why, would, why wouldn't it be, should, should be going the, out? The, the, pot, the pot just doesn't have the same physical properties as food that within a short time, it absorbs. Yeah. And the same thing if the tear is heter in a kli of, of Isra that the tzir of heter will not necessarily absorb from that pot, whoop, in a few minutes, as opposed to meis leis. In tzir, in a keli, you do need meis leis. Everybody thinks, I, I, I think everybody agrees on that, that you don't apply the shear of tzir by pots and pans. In other words, pots can become usur from kavush. Things that were heter, sitting in a pot of heter can become usur. A pot of us isur can become usur because of the kavush sitting there. But it's even, even, but this would apply even to tzir. It would have to be a meis leis. What's what's interesting about this area of kalim is that some poiskim are mechalic between the type of keli. Some say, I think the Isur Behetor says that there's no coverage by metal keli. Now, where do they know this from? Where do they? You have to have a makor for this. And what's interesting about this is that the makor for all of this, where everybody tries to get some, some, uh, some makor, is dafka from. The, an, an example in the Gemara, and this is Simon Kuf Lamed Hay in Shulchan Ochen Yerdea, with Yain Nessa, with wine, going putting in their wine in our barrels. Mm. Big Machloik is a poiskim there. 
about what to do. There's a lot of spakers there, some achloikas. What do you do? And over there it says you take off kadei klipa from the barrel. If you cut off a klipa, then the, then the barrels are okay. The wine is cold, so it sat there. So even though it sat there for a long time, they're not, they're not makbid more than a klipa. And that's what the Taz brings down. The Taz brings down a riot from the Rashba that a wooden keli that had wine of goyim sitting into it just peel off the kelim and you, the kelim are, are fit to use now again. So he learns from that that in a keli we know there's an issue, but the issue will only be a kedekipa. You know this is a big deal because if you hold like the issue of a heter who, holds, who happens to hold over here that the kli becomes completely also just like by bishul if you ever cook something in that kli you're in trouble. Remember we talked about the difficulties of having shishim connected the whole kli? But if you say that that kli of heter only became also kadei klipa, that's not a problem. And that's what the Taz says. Not, not as much. Not as much a problem. The Taz says that, 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 that we're not going to be machmer more than a klipa in the kli. Yes, the kli will become also because of the kovush. It had the isra sitting in there. But only kadei klipa. As opposed to the isra of heter, it says the whole thing will come also. Now when we're talking about kli, yeah. absor- kli absorbing mamashes, because I could imagine that no, the, 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 the mam- wooden barrel actually absorbs some of the liquid itself, not just the taste. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about the mamashas. Mamashas. Yeah, yeah, the mamashas, well, because that's what covers does. And, yeah. and by, by, by metal, yeah. by metal, so it stands to really absorb mamashas, you know? Yeah, well, obviously it's, not the re- it's, not, it's never absorbing the real mamashas, but it's absorbing quite a bit. Quite a bit, and, and we have to figure against the whole thing. That's what we have, because we don't well, know when how much. We, when we're cooking. Yeah, when we're cooking, yeah. So in this kavush, in a keli, it's going to absorb. The question is, how much? So that's a separate machloikas. And the task brings down, that's the way he learns from the Raj, but that over there by yain, the old klipa was necessary, that the most it will be usher is a klipa. However, in a kli cheres, it seems to be like the poise can say in a new kli cheres, a new kli cheres that was never used will absorb a lot more the first time around at least, as opposed to a coated. If it's coated porcelain, it wouldn't be as a much of a problem. But a regular pottery, the, 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 the interesting one of all is glass. This is my favorite. Oh, all right. It shouldn't have supposedly it's been sitting in glass for 10 days. What would you say? So everybody would like to put the Ramon in, in Hilchas Pesach. Glass, chas v'shalom. It's just like Leicheres. You can't kasher it. Ashkenazim. As far as they say, you don't even need to kasher it. There are ways that you can kasher glass too. Certain glass. So what's the answer to that Ramah? The answer is what the Ramah has been telling us about glass is a chumra in Ilchas Pesach, not in Kovush. In Kovush, guess what? You're right. We would say glass, according to most Poiskim, does not absorb at all. It falls off. <laughs> Good. Good. Just wash it off. Just wash it off. Perfect. Theoretically, you can have glass dishes or the place. Yes, but we don't do it. We don't do that. But That's correct. Theory. In theory, you could. Just not for Pesach. Right, of course. Most writing for you prepare. But not for meat and milk. Say. But not for meat. So Pesach is Pesach, for yes. Milk? Yeah, not meat and milk. We don't do it no, for no, meat and no, milk. I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking Especially for, if you have it for right. hot. One of them so, is hot. So for the team, would we use it for Pesach to wash it? Yeah. But no problem. not use them milk. No, never. So they're being more, more machmer in milk and meat than on, on Everybody glass. is. Yeah, meat and milk, we're machmer. We, do, we don't mix kalim. And we don't say, oh, glass we can. We don't mix. We don't make exceptions. Right, no. Basel is different. Yes. Yes. But, but theoretically. Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, yes. You should be. You should be, but you should be concerned. And at least not use them hot. Because just in case, there, I mean, there are opinions that hold that glass is, is, is it does absorb. It's like a chechares. That's why he's machmer in miracle space. But I would think if there are such opinions. But if it's cold, it's not a problem. So if you, all, if you never, that is why I tell people about Hilchas space when it comes to Hagala, of your kois shel kiddush, alachatli you don't really need to make a to it, even though you use it a whole year, because you used it only for cold wine. When was the last time you used hot chametz wine, or when was the last time you cooked in your in your becher in your kois? Even, even if you washed it, in hot- makes no difference. It, it doesn't make a difference. But if there was still wine in there, you washed. It. No, because there's not really that, there's no wine left. I mean, you drank the wine. You, you, you're going to wash it with wine inside? There are some drops, mm-hmm. right? It's, 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 bottle in the water. it's just a humro. Pesach, we are machmir in many ways, but Ashken, especially Ashkenazim, more. But technically, you don't need to make Hagala to it because it was cold. Cold wine. 
And even if you used it once, by the way, the halacha is by, if you, you may have learned it in Basr al I think, that let's say you just used it once for, for the wrong one. There is a, let me see if I can remember the example. Can't remember right now the example. There are situations where even if you use it for hot once in a while, but most of the time it's cold, that kind of a situation, for the different one, it would be still okay. Because you would go by the majority use. It's something called majority use. So anyway, that's a different area of halacha. And the wines are not used for pesto. Exactly, time. exactly. Why is it a problem? Yeah. Anyway, so the Taz holds the halacha lemais. That's the way he holds. The shach is choilek. Uh, on the, if it was wood or if it was metal. And it's only matter if we have a suffix of like how much time it was to take off a clipper. But if you know for sure it was mace lace, he holds that you do have to, it does answer the whole thing. Not just the clipper. If it sat in there for a whole to, for the mace lace. Unless you have a suffix, you don't know how much time it was. So with the metal, one more time, we have the Taz who, who actually the Taz by the, uh, on metal, he, the Isabel Heter is actually also lenient. He, he's the one, he's one of the Rishonim that holds that there's no Kavush in metal, which is interesting. He may be one of the only ones. Kavush, because when you're talking about Kalim, you read the Orach HaShulchan, I'm, I'm almost sure he's not Mechalek, from what I can tell between the various kinds. Others, Mechalek, pottery, metal, like the Yisuf Hattah says, metal, there's no Kavush. In glass, we said for sure, it tends to not be a problem. But uh, what's interesting is the metal one. According to the Yisuf Hattah, there's no Kavush, does not, can, cannot happen with metal. We don't hold like that. We're machmir. Pimigodon says we have to be machmir. Even though there's a machlokis is shining by wine and metal, here we go stam. We, we pass in stam like the mechaber, the ramo. There's no chiluk. Kovush is kovush. Except for glass where we're, almost everybody's mako. Okay. What about Basu Bechalom? Sure, 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 definitely. Now, you don't use Caleb. What's interesting about Basu Becholov is like this. There is a Hassan Soifer, I think, that says, Pesach, you can make a gola. You know what? I give you permission that Fleisha Dikipat you have, you can change it to... A Pesach, you mean? For Pesach. You can make Hagola anyway. Mm-hmm. You can change it. Let's say you have enough pot. You need, you need milk. You don't want to buy another pot. You need another pot. If you, make, you can make a gola that way, you can change that to Melech Yisrael Kavod Pesach. Just don't switch them around too, because you'll forget where you're holding. <laughs> yeah, that's the halacha with that. So for Pesach, you have permission to do that. A whole year round, one should not do these kind of things. Because you may forget. You simply may forget where you're holding. You're having basr, and chalav, chalav, basr, right? But for Pesach, as a one-time thing, you can change it. So in basr, b'chalav, ordinarily, we don't, we don't share. Not only don't we share, we are even, there's even halachas of two people sitting at the table, one is eating chop, chop, uh, what is it called, chop ribs, uh, chop uh, rib steak or whatever, and the other one is eating pizza. There's halachas on, on how to keep a distance. They can't share the same water. They can't share the same bread. There has to be something separating between us so they shouldn't come to share the same food. Imagine, two people in the same family. Yeah, exactly. A hacker. A hacker, there has to be a hacker. Right. He can. He can. He can. If you're drinking wine, if you have glass wine, you can have that glass wine of wine with your flesh and with your milk. That's correct. Because you're you not using the milk. Exactly. You can. For wine. You can. It's wine. You may have it. You may have it. As long as it's always wine. What you should not do is a, if, if you always use a mug for coffee and milk, and now you want to have it with a glass of water, with your flesh, it's better not to. Because that be a, a that's a milchik a cup. A glass is not a problem. Exactly. If it's a mug, it's, you know, and you're always having it with milk, uh, coffee, then it's a milchik a mug, you know. Even though you're having cold water now, it's not right. There's no issue, but it's not right. Okay, the last detail is the Ramah in this halacha. And the Ramah says something very interesting. And for some reason the Mechaber didn't say it, but obviously if he doesn't say it, then maybe he agrees. Kol mokom damrina kok. Kavush kemevushal. Anytime we say kavush kemevushal, I feel like chutz lekvisha asur. Even that which is sticking out outside of the liquid, it's not in the kavush. It's also asur. The lidek kvisha shlemata mefapea lemalo. The kvisha causes it to be mefapea as you sign basur to travel. Kemo bebishul. 
ויש מקילין, סמא ליניאנט, במה שבחוץ. בסופק כובש אוסור, אז הוא עושה את מדין סופק דה רייסה, מלבד בבוסר עם חולוב, דה זלינה לקולו, דה מינטור אין אוסור רק בבישול ממש. וואו. אבל סופק בוסר בחולוב, because it's not real בישול, it's a מדיר בונו, סופק דה רבונו לקולו. So now, what was the detail that, I, that, the, that the remote really added over here? It was that whatever is outside of the kavosh liquid that's sticking out is still usher. First opinion. Second opinion, yesh mekilim. Now, he does discuss this a little bit in Hilchus Melicha about things sticking out. Over there, there's a big chiluk between if something is shoming or not. And that's what the shach seems to be saying over here in this rumor. The shach and the taz, who are maker like the second opinion that you don't you don't make us to the piece that's sticking out. The Shach at least adds, if I recall, that the only exception to that would be if it's a real shaman piece of meat or something like that. Then you say that it's mefapea. When you don't have something shaman, you're not going to say that kavush is so powerful that it makes the travel to the top. What do you therefore do if you're lenient? You just cut it. The bottom is also, it was kavush, and the top is mutter. Because that's what he's saying. Now, what's interesting is this Ramah. The Ramah, usually, when he brings down two opinions, it's Asr, and then it's Yesh Mekili, he usually paskins like the first opinion. Right? Like Not in this case. Mm-hmm. This is an exception. Here, in, I think in the Dachem Moshe, whatever, he says, we are Mekel in Kovush. In Kovush, we are Mekel, even though it's like Mevushal, it's not exactly 100% like Mevushal to say that it travels. You may be lenient, if you need to at least, and at least in the Hefzad Merubra situation, you can be lenient like the second one, Lechat Chila. Or even I said Hefzad Merubra. In other words, I no, guess it depends, you know. But it says, Besafik Kavush No, 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 that's the second halacha. Safik Kavush is Osur. Milvad, the Basur in Cholot, does Lino Lekula, right? Are you talking about Basur now? That's a, no, no, that's the second detail in the Ramah. I'm talking about the first detail. Uh-huh. He talks about the halacha of what happens if you have a piece of meat, something. That's kavush for 24 hours, but only half of it was kavush. The other half on top was not. It was was outside. Mm-hmm. Then there are opinions that hold kavush is exactly like mevush in every respect. It travels. It's mefapea. He says so. And there are some that say no. Yesh makilin. So in this example of yesh makilin, which is the second opinion, even the Ramah will be lenient, which is a chidush. So you're saying the Safek Kavush ha- is sam- not going on the Makin? No, 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 it has nothing to do with it. It's a separate halacha. Okay. Ramah tells us the din, which I already told you before, that when it comes to Sveikas in Kavush, it's a Safek der Raisa. That's what he's talking no, about. It's a separate din. It's a separate din. That's what he's talking about. Derech Agav, I want to tell you that if you have a Safek in Kavush, it's a Safek der Raisa, except by Basa Bechalov. But the first din, something is sticking out, there are various opinions, and we're Mekel, right? As he says, Yesh Mekilim v'mashachutz l'tziu medivrei rav v'toyras chadras, I thought it was Darachim Moishem, Klaak of Eis, near Shekein Ikar. Oh, who says that? The Shach. The Shach. So the Shach is very, very clear about the piece of meat, or whatever it is that's sticking out of the Kovush, is not going to be Asr. Chem Mashba Dasarosh, Varashbo, and tells us when it would be a problem and when it's not a problem. But here, just being in Kovush, the peace outside would not be a problem unless you're dealing with a, something shaman. Whenever you're dealing with something shaman, it's already more of an issue. Shaman causes it to... But ordinarily, kavush in itself, as much as it's similar to mevushal, it's not going to be exactly the same. As I, as I, as I told you, for example, with kalim, the Yisra Beheta says it doesn't apply to metal. And here we see that uh, it may not apply to the peace sticking out. Even though it is in many ways like Mevushal, it's not exactly 100% like Mevushal. It just it will absorb. It has to happen over time. There has to be a Me'is Le'is. Now, what's interesting, however, is as follows. Even though we say it's Me'is Le'is, there's a situation... Let me see if I can find it here. There's a situation where we can be Mako. Even in the Mace Lace. If I can find it here. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about the Kalim. So we said, in general terms, Kovash applies to Kalim. Even though the Isabetta says it doesn't apply to men. In general, 
it does. Glass may be an exception, but in general it will make the keli osir. And if something is sitting in a keli that is osir, it will absorb the tam of the isur. And this is where there's an interesting detail, that we'll, and we'll finish with this. I can understand that the keli becomes osir, possibly. It's sitting there a long time, kovosh is similar to mevusho. But wait a minute. If the term is meis leis, the amount of time is meis leis, by that time it becomes pogum. Remember? By that time it becomes pogum anyway, so why should something sitting in a kli that's asr become asr because it sat there for 24 hours, if after 24 hours it becomes pogum? So, so not everybody is oyser. Not everybody is oyser. The Isra Beheta says it's also, but the Taz and Shach say no. That after 24 hours, it's poigam. So what do we do? How do we reconcile the differences? As some say the reason why the Isra Beheta, those who are machmir, is because what happens first? The kavush happens first, and the pogum is only after 24 hours. So you see how they explain the Isra Beheta? They explain how the other yeah, side... Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. yeah, what happens first is the kavush. And the... And the the pgima is after yeah, the 24 hours have elapsed. We absorb the taste, the bitter exactly. and, yeah. and by absorption, we don't say it on yeah. after mm-hmm. 24 hours of the pgima. Yeah. So yeah. when we go to the Israel, there's one split second, there's one. Oh, yeah, moment maybe before. a couple minutes or no, whatever. No, yeah. It, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, this one is first. Go home, and then the next. Right. Well, it's not that after 24 hours the taste only begins. Over the 24 hour period, the taste will slowly have been eased. No? Yeah, also, yeah. yeah. So, whatever was collected by the food over the 24 hour period. Well, why don't we say the same thing about the, the, the bleeding? Yeah. We always yeah. say 24 hours. Yeah, in that case, in that, in that there's not that much machlaikas. In other words, that the keli does become asr if you hold that this particular keli becomes asr? Yes. Sure. But the other way around, that was a good question. It is a good question. There it's no, going to become pogum anyway. There is no tam the gum din on food. That, that a piece of meat that has been standing for 24 hours right. will now not... Will, it's no, no, that no. There's no right. tamdav kam din on food. Right. On the other keli. On the keli. So whatever the keli gives off there, you could say tamdav yeah. kam. Whatever the food gives off to the keli. Yeah. I like tamdav the pre chadosh. The pre chadosh here, the pre chadosh, however, says, so long as you have liquid in that pot, the tam does not become pogum in the pot. How do you like that one? You hear that now? Yeah, as long as you have liquid in the pot. As long as you have liquid in that pot, the, the tam, tam that's in that pot will not become pogum. Very interesting. Because it's constantly going into the liquid yeah. back into the pot. And it's, it's similar to other halachas that we learned. If you cook, remember, water in between? Yeah, yeah. you never give a chance. Yeah. Before we... Huh? pre The pre Yeah. But the Rosh doesn't hold like that. Yeah. So anyway, so the, the pre the yeah. is the one that holds that that it, the Kovosh happens before the Kim of Mesa. That's the pre explanation of why... Yeah, so it's also why it should be uh, why it may be also yeah why would why some are not but shakatas don't are not machmir here if that's what's interesting shakatas are not machmir in that scenario but the prima goda would explain that that's the possibility the prichoda says as long as you have liquid it's not uh, going to become pogum i found something very interesting and i don't remember where it was there are various chilukim and i'm sure more than one place can bring it down and this is a local amaisa that kovush for Kovash to be Kumevush and pose a problem, it has to be 24 hours of Rotsuf. If somebody took out that piece of meat for a few minutes, looked at it or whatever, and then put it back, it's not, if you interrupted the 24 hours. Or if you change the water and put new water, you've interrupted the whole thing. For Kovash to be also, it has to be Rotsuf. It has to be continuous. Okay? And with that, we'll, we'll finish. Mitzvah Shem. We'll continue the next Eve uh, on Thursday.